Uh, the first step is how are they referred to? That's your first question, right? Have you used our service before? If not, uh, how are you referred to us? So the purpose of this is to build rapport and to connect with the reason they chose you. Have you ever thought about that? Why did they call you rather than someone else, right? Also, we have to do our marketing tracking, right? Is a repeat client, referral, what ad did they respond to? So here's what we're gonna ask them. Have you used our service before? If you have a store, have you been in our store before? What do people usually say when they, uh, and this is in the e-myth, I think, in Michael Gerber's book, right? What do people usually say when you walk into a store? Can I help you? And what do you usually say? No, no thanks. What if they ask you, um, hi, um, what is your name? Bruce, hi, Bruce. Uh, Bruce, have you been in our store before? Bruce, would you mind if we show you some new things that um, we've got in the store? Or actually, you're, you're, you haven't been in the store before. Okay, great. Well, I'll tell you what, um, what we found is that a lot of our repeat clients uh, really like this section over here. And uh, do you mind if I just show you around a little bit? Okay, great. And, you know, you build a little rapport with them. Oh, so you've been in the store before. Are you looking for anything in particular? Right? And you just engage in conversation. You're not going to try to close them right now or anything like that, but it's just build a rapport. So that's step one. How did you hear about us? Now, when someone says I was referred by Neil, what's my question going to be? How do you know Neil? What did Neil say about us? And what are you going to get uh, out of that? Gold. What kind of gold? What's that? Emotional gold. What kind of emotional gold? Why is that important? Well, there, Neil referred them. There were certain things that Neil said about us that uh, triggered them and caused them to call us rather than someone else. I think that that is, uh, we, should, we should throw a party. I mean, when that phone rings, we ought to celebrate. Seriously. What should, what's the potential lifetime value of your client? Yeah, ours is $72,000 and probably 72140 depending on how you calculate it. So there's $72,000 on the phone. So if you got somebody that's, you know, sometimes we got so many calls coming in, they, oh, another call. No, 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 no. You got to remember that on the slow days, $72,000 calling in. So what did Neil say about us? And they're going to give you all those emotional hot buttons and expectations. You're going to learn so much. What was it about the ad? What was it about what Neil said? The, whatever it was that they responded to. Does that make sense? Repeat. Great. I'm so glad that you called us again. Was there a reason that you called back today? And they might say something generic like, well, I, I just need my car. Great. Anything particular going on? Step two. Does that make sense? Step one. I know it's right after lunch, only nodding aloud is, yes, Howard, we see you. Okay, we'll do an exercise in just a minute. Don't worry, stay with me. Step two, uh, after you build a little bit of rapport, and that's pretty quick, is uh, to connect with their emotional state. Now, what I mean by that is uh, that there's a certain emotional state for every industry that the average prospect calling in is going to have. What is it in the cleaning business? Is there a little bit of fear and trepidation if they haven't used you before? Now, it's better if they've been referred and they have a little bit more confidence. In some industries, maybe they're excited. I sure don't want to kill that, right? So we've got to think about the emotional state of our average prospect out there. In our case, uh, we want to let them know that we understand their fears and concerns. Here's the fact. The fact is, is that um, in our industry and in most industries, there are people in that industry that are taking advantage of consumers. Agreed? You got bad guys in your industry, in your town? They're lying to people, standing people up? Yes? You, got, you guys with me this afternoon? 
Uh, let me know that you're alive. Wave at me. Okay, you're alive, you're awake. Come on. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to connect with that. We're going to let them know that we understand. And the script goes like that. Neil, I'm so glad that you're referred by Ralph. Uh, because unfortunately, there are companies out there in our industry that advertise that are uneducated, uninformed, and sometimes downright unscrupulous. They advertise a low price. Uh, they charge more than the quote, do a lousy job on top of it. Good luck getting them back again. And we help you avoid all of that by providing you with the most outstanding service experience you've ever had guaranteed or your money back. Now, I'm going to ask them for permission before I share all that. After Neil has referred me, I'm going to say, well, you know what, Mike, I'm so glad that Neil referred you. Do you mind if I take just a moment, since you haven't used our services before, do you mind if I take just a moment to tell you a little bit about who we are and ask you a few questions? Okay. All right, so we're going to uh, connect with that, because what are they thinking about? They're thinking about the spot on their carpet, right? They're thinking about their floor. You guys do a lot of tile and stone. They're thinking about, you know, my grout is all splotchy or I got a chip or whatever it is. Are they really thinking about the fact that they're going to get ripped off? Sometimes there's a little fear and concern, but sometimes they're just thinking about the job and we need to remind them that they're taking a risk out there and we want to make them feel comfortable. So we need to connect with that emotional state because uh, it is there. Step three is to build credibility. The way you build credibility, position your company as the company of choice, establish trust and believability, uh, get the prospect's mind off of what they think is important at the moment. What is really important is with your five-point marketing message. May I take just a moment to share with you how our company is different than everyone else in the industry. Is that a big statement right there? Do you have a unique fingerprint? Uh, have you thought about your brand since yesterday? You got that five point marketing message down? Yeah, that's right. So we got our five point marketing message, reputation, experience, education, systems, and guarantee from yesterday. And so we're just gonna share our 60 second five point marketing message because it's proven, it works. Don't reinvent the wheel, just use the system. The system works if you use it. So that, so that five point marketing message is gonna establish credibility. When Ralph tells me that he's been referred by some of the top flooring companies in California for 75 years? How long has the company been? 73 years, company's been in business for 73 years. Do y'all know what you're doing yet? No, no they're still trying to figure it out. Yeah, there you go. So, and you don't spend a lot of time on that yet, bragging. But you gotta set your position quickly so that they know who they're dealing with. Establish credibility. Then step four is the most important one of all. Step four is the most important one of all. Their perceived problems. Their, their perceived problems might not actually be the problem. But what they have in their mind. What they feel. So right here, you're going to ask a ton of questions. And the purpose of this is to... Uh, hear their fears and concerns, understand what their problems are, and you listen, 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 because the entire transaction is about solving this problem right here.